Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So we'll get started. So training for the worksite of tomorrow. First off, let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Alan Limoges. I'm the product manager for the construction division at CM Labs. Yeah. Guten Tag zusammen. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Reiter. Uh, I'm the CEO of KIA Solutions. We distribute um, Vortex in Germany, and we are specialized in training simulation. We have a lot of simulations like welding, painting, but today we're going to focus on the construction side. So a little bit about CM Labs just to begin. We're the leader in equipment simulation for operator training. Uh, we're based out of Montreal, Canada, and we've been in the simulation world for about 25 years now with over 700 simulators out in the world. Um, we specialize in earth moving and lifting equipment, such as cranes, of course, and we offer custom curriculums for OEMs uh, as well as custom simulators uh, when required. So you can have the exact machine, exact controls, whatever is needed. To begin, let's talk about some problems today that we're seeing out in the world. Um, two problems that we want to focus on are the labor shortage and the high energy costs that have been coming into the world lately. So first with the labor shortage, we're seeing a lot of early retirements uh, and fewer trainees entering the workforce. And of course, the trainees that are entering the workforce are entering the workforce with less experience. Um, I've even talked to a customer where you needed about 400 hours of crane experience just to get trained um, even further, and now they're accepting trainees with zero hours because they're so desperate. Um, and we're seeing that sort of desperation uh, across the board in terms of labor. Another problem that we're seeing is energy costs, of course, um, due to global uncertainty. And so the high energy costs are kind of moving down the chain, right? Uh, resulting in uh, high maintenance costs, high fuel costs, you name it. Um, and so in the construction industry, these are the two sort of main problems at the front of mind. We're seeing some uh, other industries that aren't just construction that are relying on simulation to really step up their game and address these problems that I just mentioned. The first one being the aviation industry. Um, of course, most people are familiar with flight simulators. You know, pilots are testing uh, and trying situations that they might not want to you know, see in real life uh, on a simulator. Another one is the military industry. They're using simulation to train uh, soldiers uh, and a ton of other industries, right? So simulation is really starting to gain momentum across the board. Um, and of course, it's not just these industries. The construction industry is at the forefront of simulation. Um, uh, Kevin, you just installed a bunch of simulators in Germany, right? So could you tell us about that? Yeah. So what we see here is the installation at Glauchau in Dresden. This is a, a competence center for heavy machine operators. So before they had this room with the six simulators, what did they do? They rented two machines and went to a gravel pit with the instructor and 12 trainees. So take the place of the instructor. You have 12 young guys. You have to um, see that they don't damage the machine, that they don't kill each other, <laughs> and that they learn something. And this is really important. So with the old way of doing it, well, you have the real machine, but you don't have the time to do it. You're away from your student. Um, and all these problems have been resolved with this um, fleet of six simulators. Now the instructor is in a safe place with his students. It is air conditioned, it is calm. And the, the, the most or the biggest advantage that they tell me is that they can be close to the students and focus on what is the most important is to teach them things, to hold their hands, say, okay, you can do it like this, and not yell to the gravel pit. <laughs> and so it's a whole different way of learning, which does not replace the machine, not fully, but at 80, 90% in most cases. Yeah. So, but still, we have the booth over there in C2, and people pass by and they say, oh, nice game. Can I buy it? Does it exist for PlayStation? <laughs> so it's not a game. It's not a game. And Alan will tell us 
why it's not a game. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons why it's not just a game, right? The first kind of main reason that's the soul of CM Labs is the accurate real-time physics. So really at its core, we have PhDs on board. We have a ton of engineers that work tirelessly to improve our physics on a day-to-day -day basis. And what the physics allows you to do is when you have accurate earth moving physics, accurate physics about the machine, um, data that's coming from OEMs, when you track the, the suspension, the transmission data, um, all of this really makes for a realistic simulation, which means when you get onto the real equipment, you're not surprised by anything. So if the dirt acts um, in the simulator a certain way and you get into the real world and dirt, you know, let's say is more clumpy, uh, harder, uh, harder to work with, um, you're going to be surprised, and you're going to have to undo that learning that you did in the simulator. So, of course, the more realistic the simulator is, then the better experience the trainee is going to have when they get into the real equipment. Um, and so that sort of motivation drives CM Labs, and that's kind of one of the main reasons it's not just a video game, is because you need a lot of computational power to run something like this. Another reason it's not just a video game is because it has this immersive aspect. So when you're on a simulator, you're surrounded by screens. Um, of course, we have simulators that come in one display, three display, five display, up to 13 displays in the port world. Um, we really offer this sort of immersiveness, not only with the visuals, but also with the feeling. So you can see here, there's a motion platform. And what this allows you to do is the training sort of feels every single movement of the machine. Um, we've even had operators who've gone on a, on a dozer with the blindfold on, and they've been able to complete exercises just by the feel of the motion. So you can imagine once you get that accurate motion combined with the immersiveness, you really get a powerful sort of training experience that you can take out into the real world. The last thing that makes it not just a video game is the advanced reporting. So when you have this high fidelity physics, you get accurate data out of it. And with that accurate data, you can use that to you know, give learning advice to your trainees, give them tips on where they need to improve. Um, and you can sort of point to certain things like, hey, I noticed you're putting a lot of pressure on your front left track or your front right track. Um, and you can really optimize the training um, kind of on a trainee by trainee basis, right? So it's not one size fits all. If you notice someone has you know, trouble with digging, then you can really drill down on that learning objective. Um, if someone has trouble driving, for example, you can really focus on that as well. So all of these three things combined make it, um, so it's not just a video game, of course, it's something that's much more powerful and, and provides a lot of value to businesses in the construction industry. And that's what's available today. So if we talk about um, kind of the realism, you can see side by side, this is what we have. On the left is the CM Labs um, simulation, and then this is the real world. You can see how the dirt's accumulating in an accurate manner. And as the operator distributes the dirt, it's flowing nicely. It has the same cohesion. Um, under the hood, there's a lot of uh, simulation and, and calculations that's going on in terms of, you know, the air molecules inside the dirt. We, we have to kind of find a way to replicate that same sort of physics before it's dug and then after it's dug. So now that we are familiar with the technology today, let's talk about some trends that we're noticing uh, kind of across the board in construction. None of these should necessarily be a surprise. The first one being GPS. So CM Labs as a company have been really excited about this for a long time. Um, and now we offer the ability to train on GPS inside the simulator. So we have a partnership with Trimble where you can actually have a Trimble tablet next to you as you operate on the excavator, uh, dozer, and motor grader, where you have the real Trimble tablet effectively using sensors. Uh, our simulators are able to effectively trick the tablet into thinking there's a real piece of equipment. Um, and using that, you're able to train on the tablet, kind of understand the different workflows, and you can try out different things in the simulator before, let's say, you launch it at scale on your fleet. The last thing that we're seeing uh, among kind of the trends in the construction industry is the connectivity. Of course, this is no surprise, but this is something that we're leaning into as well with you know, communication between different machines, between different trainees, and we're really focusing on kind of enabling our customers to have this sort of connected experience. 
So those are the trends, and now let's talk about the future, which I think, of course, is the most exciting. So as a company, CM Labs, we're always thinking about what's coming next, and we're talking about what might the future of simulation look like. Something that we're looking forward to and we can see coming, it's happening slowly, even in Germany, there's some examples of it, um, where you can get certified using only the simulator. So you can imagine in the airline industry, pilots use simulators to train, let's say your right engine fails and you wanna train for that sort of scenario. In the uh, airline industry, you need simulators to actually get your hours before you can get your pilot's license. Um, it's not so far-fetched to imagine in the future something similar in the construction industry where you need a certain amount of hours on the simulator to you know, become qualified on a certain piece of machinery. Another thing that's coming in the future of simulation is predictive training. So you can imagine the simulator being able to let you know what you're doing well at, what you're not doing well at, and tailoring the curriculum to your needs. So as an example, um, someone who has struggled with their cycle time we can notice that your cycle time is not doing so well, it's slow, and we can suggest maybe exercises that, that are focused on cycle time, or we could even modify the exercises that maybe to make them spend more time uh, filling dump trucks and maybe less time driving. Um, you can imagine this sort of predictive training is gonna become powerful, so each trainee gets something that really focuses on their needs, because no one is the same. Um, another thing about predictive training is that it's not really possible if you have poor quality data. So as I mentioned earlier with our powerful underlying physics, really, if you don't have that, then the predictive training, the data that you get out of it is meaningless. So it's something that when I talk about the power of the physics that, that drives our simulators, it really is so pervasive kind of across all of our products. And you can imagine that it really makes a big difference. The last thing that we're looking forward to in the future of simulation is being able to test site layouts in the simulator. So this one's less about the trainees, but it's more about being able to use the simulator to try out, let's say, a dangerous lift that you're planning uh, with a crane. If you want to try out different lifts inside the simulator before you actually do them in real life, you can try them under different conditions, maybe windy conditions, rainy conditions, maybe with a building in the way, maybe with the you know, object to the left, to the right. You can really play around with that and optimize your worksite layout before you actually get on the worksite. Um, you can also get the crane operators, for example, used to this dangerous lift, have them go through it 10, 20 times before they get to it in the real world. Um, and we're seeing this sort of A-B testing might be a very powerful way to use simulation, not just to train, but to actually prepare people for real life. So, now that we're sort of looking at this future of simulation, are there any s technologies that your customers are, are talking about, Kevin? Yeah, well, uh, we make uh, your vision reality with the certification. So we're beginning with our partner AST from, from Ulm um, to do um, the, the certification, Erstbediener um, Qualifizierung on the simulator. And we will have an example this Thursday on our booth um, where um, some of our employees, Patrick, will uh, learn the tower crane. Yeah, he's beginning today, so he's a novice. He's a painter originally, and uh, he will do his certification on Thursday. Hopefully, he will get it also. <laughs> and uh, I invite you also to, to join us. We'll provide details later. So the real-time certification on the simulator, this is really something that the industry helps. We were talking in a lot of uh, training centers, but industries, big, uh, training, uh, big, train, big uh, construction companies are also interested to um, do the um, recertification, Jelish uh, Unterweisung, on the simulator, because not only it saves you money, but it brings you uh, a better output in the training quality. You can take an experienced operator and just uh, improve his uh, skills say in, in terms of safety, performance, etc. But you ask me what is the most exciting thing that uh, we can have in the future, and uh, from, from me personally, it is the, the testing site layout. Um, this is really important if you have a construction company or you have a very, very difficult lift to do. You want to have the exact environment that you will be in and not a generic environment. So um, 
uh, having a, a GPS uh, um, plan or uh, some, some map data and put that in the simulator, this is really exciting, you know. But, um, you know, we are talking about high-tech things here, but I got the feedback recently and I asked the customer, what is the best feature on our simulator? And he really said the pause function. I was like, well, we, we're developing how many engineers? And <laughs> he likes the pause function. But he explained to me, they train crane. Okay? And if they lift something, he can inject a wind gust. And the thing begins to move. So now they are sweating. And uh, what am I doing? Yeah? And uh, honestly, now it happens the first time on the job site. Now they experience that on the simulator. And the fact is that they, you train that, you have your PowerPoints, you have whatever, but when it comes to the moment where you really need to catch your load, you're sweating. So he can press pause and discuss with him, what did we do, what did we learn? Okay, this I wanna do, and okay, let's go, let's go again. So there's a lot of functions on the uh, feature. Of course, we talk high level here, yeah, but you can see it on, uh, on the Vortex simulator over there that uh, there's a lot of things that enhance the training that we have now. I always say it will never replace the machine. I'm coming from, uh, I was a welder before, so I come from the handwerk, and uh, you can do a lot of things, but you have to touch the machine. You have to go there. Yeah? But you don't have to spend a lot of money in the whole training. We come to that later to do everything on the real machine. Yeah? So, for one moment, uh, let's think about your construction company and you hire someone. Let's call her Lisa. Lisa, she's new. She wants to go into construction because it's a, a, a safe environment. Yeah? You, you, can, you have your job safety, that's what I mean. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's an attractive business. So she comes to you. Uh, but she has no skills. So now you want to implement the simulator. You have a simulator uh, in your training. And the first thing she's going to do, you put her on a simulator. Just to get familiar with the controls, everything, and to memorize it, to gain that muscle memory without having to spend all the energy few, uh, costs. After a few days of training, some people are always uh, even after a few hours of training, you, know, you can go to the real machine. So Lisa goes to the real machine and gets the new experiences. It's not the same that on the simulator. It's not the same to be at 30, 50, 70 meters high and to operate that machine. But she's more confident. She's way more confident because she knows she can operate the machine. She only has to handle the the issues with, with the height, with the communication, with all that. Well, so then the cycle continues. She goes back to the simulator, goes to the machine, and after a very short time, she will be able to operate the machine safely. And this is usually what you get when you have your training. But now we can go further. We can train her to operate it efficiently. Huh? How many tons do I move per hour? How many fuel do I have in the, in the dozer or here in the tower example? Huh? What's my pendulum? I can improve that. And then she, go, she gets her certification, which she does now on the simulator. And then you go on the job site. And usually then you learn by doing. Yeah? But the thing is that it is, it is very expensive, and you don't try new things on the job site, let's be honest. So when she does her yearly recertification, you can have maybe something like this. Go on the job site, recertificate all your guys, have the stamp on it, but also bring, teach them new things. Being more safe, more efficient, and everything what the predictive training will tell you. Yeah? So, you can look up the DGUV FPHL 019, uh, which is the foundation now of the training used in simulation. 
So you saw by that example that there are many advantages, direct, I, uh, indirect, and Alan will tell you more a little bit of the return of investment of such a simulator. Absolutely. So let's list it out. So we talked about a lot of, of course, uh, benefits of having a simulator. Let's put it into real concrete terms. So some, some of the more obvious returns on investment of buying a simulator is your reduction of fuel costs, of course, um, and your reduction of machine maintenance by virtue of just using a simulator instead of using a real machine. So when you use a simulator, you're not you know, wearing and tearing your machine, which results in less machine downtime, of course. So you're saving dollars there. It's very clear. As we kind of move forward, the, the ROI becomes powerful, but it's less, let's say, dollar amounts. Another way that people are using simulators is they use them to screen candidates. So you can imagine someone who comes up to your business and says, hey, look, I have 10 years of excavator experience. Hire me right away. It might be tempting, but why not have them hop on the simulator for five, 10 minutes and you'll know right away whether they have 10 years of experience or not. And of course, when you hire someone, it's kind of a costly process to undo that if they maybe misled you. So people actually use the simulators quite often to screen their candidates. Another way that people are using the simulators is you can use data that you get from the simulator to cost out your projects and make predictions on your worksite efficiency. So imagine you know the cycle times of all of your, your entire workforce. You can make better predictions on maybe how long a project will take you or how long a day on a certain job site will take you. Uh, and, and with those better predictions, you can, of course, save money. Some other ROI uh, indicators that people are using for simulation is almost like the opportunity cost of safety incidents that might have happened no longer happen on a simulator, of course. Another thing is there's a certain opportunity cost of using equipment for training. Now that that equipment is freed up, you can use it to make money. So instead of using a backhoe all week to train people on, that backhoe could be out in the field making money for your business. Um, and so this is a ton of ways that simulators are um, really kind of recouping the investment for certain businesses, and that's today. Um, and so if we loop it back to the technologies that we were talking about earlier, the ROI sort of incentive is only going to get better from here. So in the future, you can expect to leverage simulation, first of all, to, for connected remote training. So as you know, kind of we live in this new world where, where training doesn't always need to happen in the same place. Um, with simulation, you can train people across your business, whether they're in the same country, whether they're in the same you know, town. Um, you can train them with the same curriculum and give them that same experience to kind of standardize your training. So um, another way that you can expect to leverage simulation in the future is through life cycle costing. So it sort of loops back to the physics that I was talking about. With the powerful physics, we can better understand how you, your trainees are wearing out the machines in the simulation. So let's say your trainees tend to be very hard on the bucket or they're hard on their transmission. We can tell what's going on and we can potentially give you information on how to rectify that before they use the real machine. And also just sort of knowing that fact, we can make predictions on um, you know, how long you can expect to have an excavator before you need to maintain it in certain departments. So with this powerful data comes better um, life cycle costing. Another thing is the efficient worksite planning that Kevin and I talked about, where you can plan out your worksite and then have it ready to go um, in the real world. So you can have your dangerous lifts in the simulation before you actually try it in real life. The second to last thing you can expect from uh, the simulation in the future is the sort of ongoing skill development. So right now, when you use a simulator, you go to the real equipment, you go back to the simulator a couple of times, um, and then you sort of graduate to the real machine. But in the future, there's going to be an ongoing skill development on the, on the simulator. So you can imagine you've had a long winter, you haven't used the excavator in six months, or someone is moving to a new piece of equipment. You have them hop on the simulator, kind of get the rust off, and get that ongoing skill development. You can also get people to kind of an expert level on the simulator. So you can imagine you're training someone for a new technology like GPS that's coming. Um, you can train someone for a new excavator attachment that your business has purchased. You can train them on the simulator first, get them that confidence, and then have them use it in the real world. Finally, 
another thing you can expect from simulators in the future is to be able to give these sort of predictive insights on your trainees. So using artificial intelligence and the, the powerful data that I talked about earlier, you're able to you know, give better insights on your trainees so you know, let's say, John Doe is good at um, you know, digging and, and therefore they have all sorts, all sorts of parameters associated with that person. Then you also have your other trainees that let's say have skills in this department and then are weaker in other departments. And you can use this sort of predictive analytics to make better decisions on your, your staffing and who you're going to put in certain um, kind of job sites. And so you can imagine all of this together makes for a very powerful kind of ROI calculation when it comes to simulators. So really that's a very future tech talk on the world of simulation. Um, but if you want to, you know, try it out for real right now, uh, we definitely encourage you to come to our booth. Uh, if you don't mind giving that. Yeah, info. I would invite you all in, uh, uh, auch in Deutsch, ihr könnt uh, gerne kommen und uh, euch überzeugen. Um, so we will have two machines over there. We have this one and uh, another simulator, which also can work together. You know, this is also uh, standard now, uh, and uh, it is really um, amazing. You will find us at C2 226. It's very easy. It's where all the people are looking and taking pictures. Okay, so <laughs> this is where we are, and uh, uh, no pressure for Patrick. Uh, on Thursday, 2 p.m., he's going to be a crane operator. Yeah, and uh, maybe we can talk to one of the of Lipe or someone if he if he can go on a wheel crane and let's see. <laughs> No, um, honestly, we would like you to come to our booth that you will see what technology can do today for you and your, your operators, your, your company, because it's way more than just training or um, the first week of the beginner training. It's really uh, from recruiting to expert level to improvement of your processes. And this is what we want to show you. Thank you, everyone. If there's any questions, we are